Today is a very good day because we are baking a cake. I'm going to show you how to make my healthy banana cake. You guys, this is the ultimate snack cake. It is so tender, it is studded with chocolate, and it just happens to be gluten-free, grain-free, dairy-free, and paleo. Hey guys, I'm Nikki Sizemore. Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome back to my channel. So this healthy banana cake has the best flavor. It's naturally sweetened with just mashed banana and a little bit of honey or maple syrup. And we're gonna take it over the top with a two ingredient frosting, which is optional, but highly recommended. My family goes crazy for this cake. As you may know by now, this is my favorite kind of cake to make. It's rustic, it's wholesome, it's easy, and it's the kind of thing you can serve for dessert or as a snack or as breakfast. Don't forget to like and subscribe, that way you won't miss out on any of my wholesome, family-friendly and gluten-free recipes, and let's dive in. Instead of using all-purpose flour in this cake, we're going to use almond flour, which not only makes it grain-free, but it gives the cake this ultra-tender, rich texture that I love. As you know, if you watch my channel, I'm going to suggest nicely that you invest in an inexpensive kitchen scale if you do a lot of gluten-free baking so much more accurate and so much easier. But I do include cup measurements at the link below. We need two cups or 220 grams of almond flour. This recipe is actually based off of my gluten-free banana bread recipe. It's a one bowl paleo banana bread. It is my favorite banana bread and I'll link to that below as well. We're also going to use some arrowroot powder. You could use cornstarch in its place. This is going to help give the cake some more structure. And we need a quarter cup, which is 28 grams. And then last but not least, we just need some fine sea salt and a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. Baking powder will help the cake to rise. We'll just whisk this together. Whenever I'm working with almond flour, I always like to get in there after I whisk it to break up any clumps of the flour. Almond flour can be really clumpy when you buy it, and this way you can ensure there won't be any clumps in the cake. Some recipes have you sift it, but I'm way too lazy to do that. <laughs> it's like one, one more dish I don't want to dirty. All right, that's it for the dry ingredients. I'm just gonna set this aside, put these things away, and we'll grab the rest of the ingredients for the cake. First thing we're gonna do is mash up some bananas. Ideally, you want to use some overripe bananas like I have here. And you're going to need one cup of mashed banana, which I find is about two large bananas or three small bananas. So peel these. We have a lot of overripe bananas right now, but what I do with all of them at the end of the week if we don't eat them is either make banana bread or freeze them. And we use them in our smoothies and they make the smoothies so rich and creamy. And we're just gonna get in here with a fork and mash them up. This totally brings me back to the days of making baby food for my girls. Nowadays, this is usually their job. <laughs> if they know I'm making this cake, they jump to it because they both love this cake. All right, that looks good. So you do wanna measure this out at this point. Otherwise, sometimes if there's too much moisture in the cake, the inside never fully cooks through. So we're gonna need one cup. Yeah, that's just about perfect. Go, set that aside, and we'll put that into a little bowl and add the rest of the ingredients right in here. All right, so we are going to need a quarter cup of a neutral vegetable oil. You can use a safflower, sunflower, grapeseed, canola. Um, oh, a little trick. We also need a quarter cup of honey, but I love to measure the honey after the oil because it then slides out of the measuring cup. By the way, these little mini measuring cups are one of my favorite tools ever. <laughs> I use it all the time for things like this, but also for salad dressings. So I'll link to that below if you want to check that out. It's right, quarter cup of that. You could use maple syrup in place of the honey if you prefer, if that's what you have. Look at that, it just slides right out. We're gonna do a teaspoon of vanilla, and last but not least, two eggs. All right, looks good. Now all we need to do is transfer the wet ingredients to the bowl with the dry ingredients and stir to combine. I just love cakes like this. They're so easy to make. All you need are some bowls and a whisk. You wanna get down in the bottom and make sure you get all those pockets of flour. I'm gonna swap out my whisk here for a spatula. Okay, so you can stop here, but we're not quite done yet because we are going to flavor the cake with some chocolate chips. Or you can use chopped dark chocolate 
or you can omit them. But in my family, if there is any excuse to add chocolate, we are going for it. Fold that in just like that. And our cake batter is ready to go. I have an eight inch cake pan that I've spritzed with cooking spray or you could rub it with oil. And I've lined the bottom with some parchment paper and that's gonna make the cake come out a lot easier. Look at all those chocolate chips. I just wanna spread this out into an even layer and then we're gonna bake it in a 350 degree oven. It'll take about 30 minutes. You wanna make sure it's golden brown on top and a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. You wanna let the cake cool in the pan for 10 minutes and then transfer it to a cooling rack and let it cool completely. But we're not quite done yet. We are going to transfer it to a serving plate and make that two ingredient frosting that I told you about. This is the easiest frosting ever. It's made with just a half cup of chocolate chips and two tablespoons of nut milk, or you can use any milk you have. I'm going to microwave this in 15 second intervals until the chocolate is completely melted. Now we love this chocolate frosting on this cake, but another one of our favorites is my maple cream cheese frosting. That one is made with just cream cheese and maple syrup, and I'll link to that below. Now there is something about melted chocolate it feels like magic every single time. So all you want to do is just dump the whole thing right into the center of the cake. And then I'm gonna use an offset spatula. You could use a regular spatula or even the back of a spoon and just spread it all over the cake. You can see I'm turning the cake instead of turning my body. Just a little bit easier. That's why I put this on a cake stand. There we go. Mmm. Okay. Oh man. This is gonna be so good. Now you can let this sit out at room temperature all day, overnight, but I'm not waiting that long. I'm gonna try slice now. So the frosting's gonna be a little more melty than usual, but that's because I'm very impatient. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Check out all of those chocolate chips and the interior of the cake is so moist from all that mashed banana. You can serve it all on its own. You could serve it with a scoop of ice cream for a birthday cake or special occasion. For me, this is all I need, a fork and a plate. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> that is so good. It is like a rich banana cake, but then you get that chocolate, those studs of chocolate on the inside, and then that chocolate frosting on top. And this just might be my new favorite cake. <laughs> I hope that you guys give it a try. Let me know if you do in the comments below. I hope I don't have chocolate all over my mouth. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Nikki Sizemore. This is From Scratch Fast. I will see you next time.